This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. One of these days, Michiru is going to snap and, like, probably kill somebody. And it'll honestly probably be justified homicide at this point. My master always used to tell me that the success or failure of an operation is 80% decided before you pull the trigger. Point being, preliminary planning and advanced groundwork are crucial. And in general, disorganization and dysfunction in the field is the product of problems within your group's interpersonal dynamics. Smooth communication and functional relationships create the favorable conditions necessary for success. You need to keep the people around you up to date on your situation and ensure that everyone shares a common understanding. In obedience to that theory, I voluntarily submitted myself to an aggravating interrogation from my classmates yesterday. But unfortunately, there's still one more person in the school I need to offer a report to. Well, considering that she possesses the authority to restrict my actions, it might be more accurate to call this one a negotiation rather than a report. When negotiating, it's a serious mistake to admit a position of weakness. If the balance of power is overwhelming and tilted toward your opponent, your goal is to keep them from realizing it. At times, a little empty bravado is called for. So in summary, Sachi and I are dating as of yesterday. You have a problem with that? <laughs> Apparently unfazed by both my arrogant tone and sizable pair of feet, currently propped up on her nice wooden table, Chizuru offers me a little round of mock applause in place of a scolding. Aren't teachers supposed to object to this sort of thing by default? <laughs> Oh! Thanks, Principal! You're not considering the possibility I might take advantage of Sachi and then throw her away. Hands off teacher much? <laughs> Sounds like something JB would say. What? A modest, youthful woman like you? who could still pass for a student in a pinch, idolizing some shaggy-headed bimbo who trapezes around dressed like an effeminate stage magician? <laughs> I'm just waiting for JB to also be in the same room. Ah, that's a relief. <laughs> they don't know me very well, do they? And now she's talking like some kind of educator. Cheeky woman. You're a principal. Because <laughs> you're my pal. The women I know have a habit of coolly declaring that they understand things about me that I'm not aware of myself. From my perspective, it's kind of disconcerting. Maybe I'm just that transparent of a human being, but whatever the case. This sort of vague, unconditional trust just makes the pressure and sense of responsibility I've burdened myself with weigh all the heavier on my shoulders. Sweet. Independent, she says. This sense, I'm, that, uh, this sense that I'm acting exactly as Chizuru anticipated is a little galling. But I guess putting up with a bit of smug self-satisfaction on her part is far preferable to fighting against her opposition. To be honest, though, I'm not confident I can play the boyfriend role particularly well. What do you mean, role? You're her boyfriend. Guess so. My master taught me the knowledge and attitude necessary to get by in Ichigaya, and so far I've been able to compensate for my shortcomings in other fields through determined effort. So if I was dealing with someone who wanted a comfortable lifestyle, or a prettier face or something, I'm confident that I'd be able to make it happen, given enough time. But, I honestly don't know if I'll ever be able to make happiness mean the same thing for Sachi as it does for me. I'm well aware that once someone forgets what happiness is, it's not easy to make them remember again. After all, you could say this whole project is an attempt to do for Sachi what my master did for me. Chizuru relaxes in her chair as she speaks, and her eyes find mine, gentle as a new mother's. Why would hearing about my self-doubt inspire relief, exactly? Mm-hmm. 
All human beings are works in progress. Weren't you the one mocking me for being a romantic just the other day? You're laying it on pretty thick yourself all of a sudden. There's nothing wrong with Corny, by the way. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Oh yeah, I always forget that because we don't have classes or homework right now. And what's that supposed to mean, apart from the blindingly obvious? I'm waiting for another guy to show up. Where it's like, oh, we're having a new student, and it's like a second guy, and it changes everything. That would be great! That would be a great twist! <laughs> Help from the people around me, huh? Huh. <laughs> At first glance, they're an eccentric bunch, and a number of them have some serious deficiencies as students. But as a group, they've got an unexpectedly observant and responsible side when it comes to helping out their classmates. When Sachi went missing, every one of them cooperated on their own initiative, above and beyond what I asked of them. Can't say Chizuru is wrong about this one. Oh boy! Yeah, I suppose so. If it's summer vacation, why are we all still at the school? I mean, I get that Yuji would be at the school because he like lives here and like he's also like a part he's that has this part time quote unquote janitor job. But like, why is Sachi not back with her aunt and uncle? Why is Michiru not back from wherever she is? I mean, I get Yumiko also would not want to be with her dad because she seems to hate her dad. Am Amine has. I know for a fact Amine has parents who work at a restaurant. Why is she still here? I guess I, I understand why some of them would be here. Like, I also, like, Makina said that her mom hates her. But. Mm. Conven <laughs> convenient visual novel. Guess you're probably right. My uncertainty about this new relationship is my own problem. The things Sachi needs for me aren't going to change. The soul searching and second guessing can wait until after she's regained something like normality. Honestly, out of all out of all the female characters in the game, Principal is the real winner here. Like, no question. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. I retract the comment. So so. As Chizuru stands from her chair, I follow her lead and push myself up off the sofa. Well, I'll give it my best shot. I've done nothing. Oh no, I bought her Culver's. Hope you're right. Just as I reported to Chizuru, yesterday Sachi and I officially became a couple. Although doing so is a necessary step towards helping Sachi regain herself, I don't want our relationship to be nothing but the means to an end. That's good! I was a little worried that, like, he's like, I'm gonna, like, ask to be her boyfriend so I can, like, fix her problems, and then we can part ways. Okay, at least he wants to be with her. And while my master taught me a few things about romance, it was more like plain make-believe than anything else. This is the first time I've been in a genuine romantic partnership. I've somehow stumbled into a position of potentially considerable influence over the life of someone I care about. It's a heavy thought. A single drop of sweat runs down my spine, sending a slight, unreasonable chill throughout my body. Guess it's only natural that I'd be nervous. <laughs> Hi, Sachi. Hmm? Lowering my eyes from the ceiling, I discover a shadowy shape protruding slightly from behind a pillar. I love the effects in this VN. 
Judging from the single glint of light that follows as I move, they're probably watching me with a monocular of some sort. A decently made toy of that sort can read fine newsprint from about 10 meters away. The Pro models are highly useful as inconspicuous portable surveillance devices. But since this is almost certainly just Machina screwing around with something she ordered out of the back of a comic book, it shouldn't pose a problem to just leave it be. <laughs> he could give her the boyfriend experience and then see ya, you're ready for the real deal. Hmm, yeah, that would also be bad. I thought that was Sachi. I, it sounded like Sachi's breathing, but maybe it was Machina. Maybe, uh, this could literally be any of the girls right now. I don't think it's Principal, though. Hmm... But even as I move from place to place, the shadowy form and its glint of light follows persistently. Getting followed around all day would be kind of unpleasant. I think it's time I put an end to this. After a moment of quiet concentration, I throw open my eyes and dash fiercely at my hidden observer. Ah yeah, that's Sachi. And making full use of my surprise advantage, I barrel toward my t uh, target before they have time to react. Cut. <laughs> As my momentum carries us rolling across the ground, I twist my body to protect the stalker from the impact. When we come to rest in the shadows, there's a floral scent tickling my nose, and the feeling of something soft in my hand. This would be a female breast, if I'm not mistaken. A little small for Amine or Yumiko, but not meager enough to be Makina or Michiru. Wow, you are so rude. Sachi, is that you? You could literally just open your flippin' eyes. Well, to be honest, I was also going off your scent and the non-reaction to be tackled among other things. Not her voice or her appearance! No, we've got to make dirty jokes. I rise to my feet as I speak, and then reach out a hand to Sachi, who's still sprawled out on the ground. Why are you blushing all of a sudden? Appreciate the thought, but nobody asked for that sort of help. Because you've been stalking me since I left the principal's office. Well, you did tell her to observe everything you do, so you've got no one to blame but yourself for that. Of course I was. The way you kept pointing that thing straight at my face, it'd be pretty damn hard to miss the reflection from the lens. I somehow doubt that. Well, probably because it was too obvious to mention. More importantly, why did you feel the need to conduct a surveillance operation on me this late in the game? <laughs> Meta! Did somebody ask you to investigate my movements? Yeah, you told her to do that! Oh, I did. Wait, I did? Do you, do you not even remember half the things you say? And that's why you were spying on me from the shadows of a monocular. How reassuring. Naturally, I didn't mean observe carefully in that sense, but Sachi interpreted it that way. I guess I'll have to make a mental note for future reference. Just as I'm heaving a small sigh, Michiru's shrill voice approaches. Wow, I just can't believe it! If that's a problem, I can leave. Breathe, Michiru, and think clearly. The answer is no. <laughs> 
My finely honed instincts are telling me it's probably best not to ask what dignity at the moment. How about you learn to clean it yourself? In other words, you're incapable of picking it up after yourself. Good to know. とても綺麗好きだけど、部屋を散らかす方がちょっとだけ得意なのよ。うん。サウンドラフ。で、でしょ。で、さちは今大丈夫なの？えっと、ゆうくん、みちるさまがこう言ってるのですが。いや、
my god. Michiru... <sighs> At times like these, one can't help being grateful for Michiru's easily manipulating nature. Okay, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna come out and say this. Michiru is 100% pretending to be stupider than she actually is. Like, I've seen... There have been a couple of scenes where she's shown to be very perceptive. And then just tries to hide it. So I'm pretty sure she's at least partially faking her stupidity. Anyway, the room itself doesn't look that messy. What did you want us to clean up specifically? Averting her eyes in shame, Michiru points to a corner of her room where numerous stacks of dusty manga tower halfway to the ceiling. <laughs> From a glance at the titles, they all seem to be Sundere-centric. Can we see that in a CG? And that's why you came to Sachi. Yeah, I already gave you my word I'd help, so you can expect my best efforts. Hmm. Gathering the plastic string from the floor, I make free loops, then begin to slip the magazines inside about six at a time. Get a good pile inside, then cross the string so they intersect on top, make a few small loops at the corners, and then pull it top. There! A good tight bundle. <laughs> yes, you can watch me on prime time. Not quite. Pick this one up from some book I read ages ago, that's all. Sachi, how many do we have left? My hand's still in motion, I ask for a progress report, only to be informed that the job is practically over. By dividing the work efficiently between the two of us, we've completed Michiru's request in less than ten minutes. <laughs> what?! Huh?! When I turn back, Michiru's rolling helplessly around the floor, her entire body bound with a plastic string in the popular tortoise shell pattern. Hey there, Michiru! I understand if you've acquired a taste for bondage, but it strikes me as kind of rude to play with yourself while people are doing your chores for you. Wow. Sachi did? Why? These jokes are falling flat. Yeah. <sighs> Although I suppose this could be taken as another demonstration of the friendly and trusting relationship these two share, the way she meekly allowed Sachi to truss her up like a Christmas ham can only be described as pure Michiru. Well, yeah, the request itself wasn't anything particularly tough. Hey, maybe she doesn't know how to tie knots. <laughs> wow! Hmm. Good. Way to go, Michiru. Keep those soothsayers out of your room. Yeah, same to you, Michiru. You've been a help. Yeah, it, it should. No need to think too hard about that one. Incidentally, if you need another favor sometime, come straight to me. 
Uh-oh. Yeah, as long as I can help, I will. Anything you want, feel free to ask. Dangerous thing to tell her. <laughs> huh? Hardly as shocking an offer as all that, is it? I don't know what else I'd mean. Same deal as Sachi, basically. Of course, that only goes for the humanly possible. Dude, why would you offer that? Muttering the words more to herself than anyone else, Michiru pumps a fist at her side in an apparently display of enthusiasm. What's with you? That's pretty close there, Michiru. Yeah, dude, do you know how many pickle jars that she has been unable to open that she can now ask us to help her? There are like 10 partially eaten pickle jars in her fridge that she can't get open. After abruptly terminating the conversation, Michiru practically pushes Sachi and me out of the room, then slams the door shut. Don't really understand what that was all about, but it seems like she has something on her mind all of a sudden. <sighs> seems the day I can fully decipher Michiru's modus operandi is still far away. Huh, not really. I thought I'd just read in my room for a little while. Yeah, I'm the one who just asked you to try and spend time with me, after all. These actions have meaning. This is for her own good, in the long run. But even so, that doesn't change the fact that I'm taking advantage of Sachi's internal rules to manipulate her behavior. Yeah, that's... That's not good. Huh? Something wrong? Which time? No, not really. Apparently relieved by my response, Sachi smiles broadly. I noticed this earlier as well, but apparently the girl's pretty astute at picking up on small changes in my expression. Okay, back to the topic at hand. Go grab a few books from your room and bring them over, alright? The genre doesn't matter. Yeah! When she asked that question, those clear and steady eyes seemed to be staring right through my skull to the guilty feelings rolling around inside my head. It gave me a bit of a start. <laughs> Make me a sandwich! <sighs> hey, girl. What are you up to? What? Uh oh. This is not good. <laughs> Inside my practically undecorated room, silent except for the sound of the air conditioning I turned on for Sachi's benefit, I turned the pages of my book without offering any real conversation. Sachi doesn't offer a word of complaint at any of this. When I glance over, she's sitting passively exactly where she was an hour ago, a contented smile on her face. Are you just happy doing this? Look, Sachi, are you planning to read at some point or what? She's just watching me read for an hour? I feel like even if you're super crushing on someone, that's weird. Well, I'm not trying to force you or anything, but is watching someone who's sitting around reading a book really any fun? <sighs> we gotta do something about Makina. That's so. Although I can't say I enjoy being compared to Makina, I guess it's safe to interpret that as an attempt at a compliment. I think I've told you this a few times by now, but you're definitely a unique one, Saji. For example, I don't think you'll find many people who will smile happily after essentially being called bizarre to their face. But that said, spending this quiet time alone together isn't so bad on my end either. 
In fact, it brings back some faint memories of the old days. We used to watch each other like this a lot in the park. I look up at Sachi as she soared into the sky on her swing, and she'd look over the bench at me as I started my homework. At this stage of my life, the constant presence of my s at my side doesn't feel as natural as it did back then. That gaze makes it a little hard to relax, even. But ask me if I find it unpleasant, and my answer would be a definite no. Hmm? Just as I'm reaching the end of my book, my attention is caught by the sound of someone rushing noisily down the stairs. No! I did not! Our sudden visitor and her bizarre question are too much to process on the fly. Sachi and I look quizzically into each other's faces. Look, woman, you burst into my room fine, but do me a favor and keep your twisted delusions to yourself. I push myself up off the bed with a few cold words, then deliver a light poke directly to Amine's forehead. No. Hold on, Amine. I roughly understand what happened here, but where exactly did you pick up this criminally fraudulent misinformation? Another one popped up out of nowhere. Amine. Amine, even if I was volunteering to be the slave, um, I'm dating Sachi, so that's totally off the table. I'm not really one for agreeing with rude insults like that. But, accurate? And where did you hear that story from, Makina? Okay, so Michiru probably misconstrued what we told her, told Yumiko, who told Makina, who told Amine, and then they played the game of telephone, and the original phrase has completely been lost. Hmm. To conjecture from what I've heard so far, it seems the offer I communicated to Michiru was badly distorted on its way to Amine and in the classic telephone game style, yes! But it'd be a pain in the ass to try and correct all the misunderstandings one by one, so I guess I'll gather the whole lot of them and explain. Before the story gets even more muddled, let's discuss this as a group. Yeah, appreciate it. As it turned out that Sakaki had left the dorm for a while, we ended up waiting in the sl for the slightly cooler evening before gathering in the lobby for a little chat. Now that I've got you all together, I've got a few preliminary questions for clarity's sake. Sakaki, what did you tell Makina this afternoon? Alright then, Michiru. What did you tell Sakaki? I see. So that's how it is. Because from the sound of things, you're pretty obviously the sole criminal here. No! It's not! We really need to do something about Makina. That's not good, Nick. <laughs> That's not good if you're willing to do it. <laughs> Smiling wryly, Amine rubs the back of her head in an uncharacteristic gesture of mild embarrassment. No, there, this is not your fault. Yeah, I did indeed say that. Except I only offered it to you. 
<laughs> Anything? <laughs> well, it has to be something I'm capable of doing, but more or less. Yumiko, common sense is not common. It's a little complicated. But to put it simply, I'm doing this for Sachi's sake. Michiru shrugs her shoulders, a mildly exasperated expression on her face. Yeah, I guess you could put it that way. Although I could quibble about that phrasing, she's got the crucial point down. I'm assuming the role normally reserved for Sachi in this dorm. Uh, I know this was bad, but... Okay, I'm, will I'm willing to do favors for Michiru and Yumiko, not for you two. <laughs> Because you two are going to ask for dirty things. Red alert, red alert. True. You are, you are actually the worst kind of woman, Amine. Probably not. I'm sure Yumiko has a huge amount of books in her room that she needs carried somewhere. <laughs> or she either has to make like 500 trips or she needs to get someone with muscle. <laughs> no worries, Yumiko. I, I, I make a killer massage. That is a little strange, but don't worry, I'm gonna give her the bee bear massage, which is not pleasant. <laughs> you look tense. Let me give you a massage. <laughs> I, I think she's been like that just the whole time. How is, how is Michiru the most normal one here? Even as the atmosphere of our little meeting takes a rapid turn for the dubious, Sachi maintains her utterly unperturbed smile. So anyway, ultimately speaking, I might be taking some of your work from you, Sachi. Is that alright with you? Sachi needs some hobbies. I see. お兄ちゃんを信用するのはいいのだけど、今回ばかりは反対しておいた方がいいと思うのよ。反対ってどうして？油切った中小企業の課長みたいになってるアマネの顔を見る限り、お兄ちゃんはきっと明日からパンツが